uh, volatility in the market has brought to light fresh concerns and new proposals for safeguards. Uh, one of the most talked about efforts is the bipartisan bill introduced in Congress to create a sweeping framework for crypto assets and significantly expand the oversight powers of the U.S. derivatives regu regulator, the Commodities Future Trading Commission. Just days ago, I spoke with the co-authors of the legislation, U.S. Senator from New York, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, and U.S. Senator from Wyoming, Cynthia Lummis. I asked them, I started by asking them, what's next with their bill? Um, I wanted to know if they could see the whole package or parts passing any time in the near term, and uh, this is how they responded. From the Ag Committee, we have an opportunity. Uh, the chairwoman and ranking member are finalizing their bipartisan part of our bill. So their part would be the CFTC jurisdiction part. And because that is bipartisan, because it is going to have time within the committee, there's a possibility that we get to vote on that piece by the end of the year. And Cynthia might have some pieces in banking that she might be able to get pushed forward. Why don't Cynthia speak to that? Yeah, that's right, Senator Gillibrand. The, the part that could go through banking this year is the stablecoin part. Uh, Senator Gillibrand and I have components on stablecoin uh, in our bill that rate, uh, relate specifically to how banks could issue um, stablecoins. Uh, Senator Pat Toomey from... Um, Pennsylvania uh, has a bill that would address how non-banks uh, could issue and what requirements would be made of them should they choose to, to issue stable coins. So that's something that could go through uh, the banking committee this year. Uh, I think both um, Kirsten and I believe that the bill in one piece as uh, a total bill is more likely to be deferred until next year. Uh, it's, a, it's a big topic, it's comprehensive, and it's still new to many U.S. Senators. Uh, and so it, it's a lot for them to digest with the few remaining weeks we have in this calendar year to um, uh, digest such an enormous topic. Well, and how do you see, you know, you mentioned the bill that Senators uh, Bozeman and Stabenow are working on. I also know House Financial Services is working on their own stablecoin bill. I mean, do you feel like the, like everyone's melding on this? Do you feel like there's agreement um, that can be reached between Democrats and Republicans on these different issues? I do. I think for those who have begun to study the issue, there seems to be some serious common ground forming. And uh, just as Senator Lamas said, uh, the two committees that have the most focused senators on this topic right now are banking and ag. There's also some focus on the um, finance committee. Uh, Senator Wyden's staff uh, and his committee wrote a good part of the tax provisions in our bill. So they had already been spending time and effort uh, clarifying what the tax uh, oversight would be. And so that's always something that could possibly move forward on its own timeline as well. Um, the other piece is the cybersecurity pieces. Our bill just uh, creates a study with NIST um, and uh, CFTC and SEC to come up with cyber standards. Uh, that's something that could move forward in and of itself as well. So I also sit on the Intelligence Committee. Um, and one of the things that Senator Lummis and I have done over the last several weeks and continue to do is we are meeting with our colleagues and we are not only socializing the bill with their staffs, but we're taking them through uh, the actual meat and bones of this legislation. I had the benefit of meeting with some of the Democratic members on the Ag Committee last night um, uh, with Chairman Benham, and we talked about a lot of the details about why it's important, what pieces the Ag Committee has jurisdiction to do, and it was a really fulsome and thoughtful conversation. And I likewise have been doing the same thing with members of the Senate Banking Committee, uh, as well as some of the members of the Republican leadership um, so my uh, banking committee discussions have been bipartisan, uh, but I also want to include uh, Republican leadership so uh, they have an idea of how far along we are with this topic, uh, how fleshed out it is, who has weighed in, what kind of comments we're getting. 
uh, and what kind of timelines we see um, uh, the same topics we're discussing right now. I would add that um, on the House side, um, Maxine Waters, uh, who chairs uh, financial services, and Patrick McHenry, who is the ranking Republican on that committee, we understand are getting uh, near an agreement on some of these issues as well. So even on the House side, they're coalescing on some bipartisan uh, policies uh, that then we can share uh, when we see what the, the House's thoughts are and they put them on paper. Uh, Senator Gillibrand and I have our thoughts already memorialized and filed uh, so we can begin to meld our thinking on these topics. Well, do you imagine you're going to get more co-sponsors on, on your particular package? Or are you seeing your package as maybe a starting point that builds into these other, you know, discussions with some of these individual bills we might see coming up in the next couple months? I, I personally have not spent time asking for co-sponsors because as Senator Lemus has said, this is a very broad and um, full bill that very few members of the Senate have the time, interest, or um, investment of understanding of all components of this bill. Uh, Cynthia and I, uh, we are rare in this way. We've really delved into this area to become subject matter experts. And uh, there's not many others that have expressed interest in doing that. Um, there are a couple. Uh, Cory Booker, for example, has spent a lot of time on it. And he's going to be one of the co-leads for the agriculture portion of the bill. Uh, and so he would be somebody on the Democratic side that might want to become a co-sponsor of the full legislation. Um, but our focus so far is really just going through the nuts and bolts of what blockchain is and what digital assets do and what the different types of business models have been created to date so that they can begin to familiarize themselves with the landscape and why there's four committees of jurisdiction and why this is something that's so urgent. And in the case of the banking committee, if it were to choose to move a, the stable coin component uh, of our big bill, uh, Senator Toomey uh, and I could meld that component of his bill and mine together. Uh, and the uh, member of the Democrat party who is uh, uh, going to be the lead uh, co-sponsor of that, who is on the banking committee, uh, is uh, Senator Cinema. Got it. Well, and, and you talked a little bit about uh, urgency. I'm curious, you know, we've seen a, a lot of turmoil in the crypto markets of late, uh, most recently with the, the bankruptcy of Celsius. Um, and I'm, I'm curious how that's impacted your views of, of your legislation? Do you feel like there are any changes that need to be made? And also, how has that impacted the conversations that you're having with other lawmakers? Do you feel like there's more urgency to do something now? I, I think, do. yeah, I think we both do. Go ahead, Kirsten. So uh, most of my colleagues were fairly alarmed with the different market um, impacts over the last uh, couple of months. And they, the number one question is, does this regulation either prevent that or improve transparency and accountability? Does it improve safety and soundness? Does it pr improve uh, consumer protections? And obviously the answer is yes, that's why we wrote the bill. And so there's additional interest now because they've seen that this is something that's important to do, that consumers are not being protected today. Um, there's no oversight and accountability and there are no rules of the road. And so there's more urgency now and also more of a sense that this is something we need to do and it's it's timely. And in the case of the bankruptcy, um, there was not even an understanding on Capitol Hill of the difference between a payment stable coin and a algorithmic stable coin in the case of uh, a payment stable coin. Um, our bills would provide that they either be issued by an FDIC insured banking institution or 100% asset backed by hard assets uh, in order to prevent uh, a, a run 
uh, on the stable coin and hence a bankruptcy like we recently saw. So um, I think there's a comfort level forming among uh, people who ask us, how would your bill address these issues? Um, and we have answers. Uh, and people can see that if our bill were in effect today, uh, that there would be a way to address uh, some of the problems that were created uh, and that failed to protect consumers uh, when this market is running uh, without a statutory framework or regulation. Well, and I, I guess for my last piece of my question, we have a few minutes left here. I did want to talk a little bit about the feedback you've gotten so far. You kind of hinted at that at the beginning of the conversation. Um, but one, you put you put your bill on GitHub, which is pretty different. Um, so maybe you could talk about why you made that decision, uh, how you felt that experience went. I know you closed comments recently. And then also, I'm curious in talking with other lawmakers, with government officials, you know, what pieces of the bill are people really coalescing behind? And are there any pieces that have kind of bubbled to the surface as needing maybe some changes? Well, the GitHub experience has been fabulous. Uh, the decision was made to use that uh, platform because, you know, th then the bill is apt to be seen by the very industry experts that we want to hear from. Uh, and that has, in fact, been the case. We've gotten great feedback uh, from stakeholders, industry experts uh, who uh, have taken the time uh, to access um, the bill through that format and provide us feedback. And then I get to my second question. I mean, in, in talking with other lawmakers, getting some of the feedback you've gotten already um, from government officials as well, what are the areas that people are kind of coming to agreement on or coalescing around? And then are there any parts that you do think may need to be modified a bit? So far, I haven't heard any comments that would have me change the bill as of today. Um, there's definitely consensus that Bitcoin is a commodity. And the question of what else qualifies as a commodity and what else qualifies as a security, we have a pretty robust definition that we worked with SEC staff on and we worked with uh, industry experts on to make sure we re really refined that definition so there could be clarity. Uh, I think where the debate will be is which fits into which definition, uh, but that's exactly what we want the regulators to do. And we create the framework and the process to do that. Uh, but for the rest of the bill, um, you know, we stay silent on three or four things where we push it to a study. People have opinions on which way to go there, but again, we didn't find consensus yet on that. And so that's why we asked for studies uh, and people are beginning to, um, really try to be heard on the issue, which is great. And I think our uh, comments process has been really fruitful. And with regard to um, getting feedback from regulators, uh, one of the things that we hope to learn um, is, uh, does anything in our bill alter their current uh, uh, authority or create unintended consequences or openings uh, for the traditional uh, types of assets that they're dealing with uh, because uh, we are creating uh, new legislation specific to uh, digital assets. Um, and I know now that our bill has been filed, uh, it has been referred to the Finance Committee, it's out there for the world to see, uh, that we can expect regulators to look at our bill through the eyes of their current challenges uh, in regulating traditional assets just to make sure that there are no unintended consequences uh, that would thwart their ability to uh, regulate uh, traditional assets uh, that they uh, are dealing with. All right. Well, it looks like we are just about out of time. Uh, thank you both for, for joining me today. It was a great conversation as usual. I look forward to see what happens with this bill going forward. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So do we. <laughs>